achieving strong economic growth is part of the domestic economic stability of the country. Now, the RBA, once they've achieved uh, a low inflation rate, they can target domestic economic stability through targeting economic growth. So in most cases, when they have achieved low inflation and growth is still low, they're going to use expansionary monetary policy in order to achieve economic growth. Now, although expansionary monetary policy will, in fact, encourage spending, this will not actually cause a, a, um, an adverse effect to the achievement of low inflation because the RBA is once again forward looking and since low inflation is their primary goal they will not do anything to compromise or jeopardize the achievement of low inflation so although it does increase aggregate demand this will not actually lead to high inflation so we don't need to worry about uh, increasing aggregate demand, which would affect high inflation. So in, in most cases, when there is low inflation, the economy is experiencing low levels of growth. And this is typical of the business cycle. So we look at the business cycle again, with time being the x-axis and GDP growth being the y-axis, we can see that fluctuates in a cyclical pattern and as we can see that there is an upward sloping trend line and again in times of trough or recession inflation is low and growth is low and so, so by stimulating growth towards this trend line it will not actually compromise the achievement of low inflation. So with that in mind, we can move on to how interest rates can affect economic growth. So what the RBA does is, is that it conducts expansionary monetary policy. And expansionary monetary policy is, in fact, decreasing the interest rates of the economy. And you can look at how the RBA actually conducts expansionary monetary policy in our lecture on open market operations, but in this lecture we won't go into depth of how they actually decrease interest rates. We're going to look at the effects of a decreasing interest rates on economic growth. So returning to this idea of the business cycle, and that in the short term, aggregate demand sort of causes aggregate supply, or if you look the other way, aggregate supply responds to aggregate demand, we'll see how the government can actually increase aggregate demand in order to increase aggregate supply and therefore economic growth. So we talked about how decreasing interest rates would actually encourage spending. And so because we, as we can break down aggregate demand to C plus I plus G plus X minus M, we can see how a decrease in interest rates could actually affect different components of aggregate demand and therefore increase spending in the economy and as a result increase the economic growth in the economy. So how does aggregate demand increase? Or so how does an, an, a decrease in the interest rate of the economy increase consumption? So we're going to look at this as a component or as a factor of different types of consumption expenditure. So we have current, we also have non-current consumption expenditure. So non-current being consumption by households on houses, uh, cars or large purchases. And so in times of low inflation it means that they will need to pay a lower rate of interest in terms of low interest sorry they'll pay lower rates of interest on uh, loans so what this means is that to buy a house not many people would have a spare $500,000 laying around so they have to borrow say 
from the bank, excluding the initial deposit. So when they borrow hundred thousand dollars, and this is usually over say a twenty-five year period, a typical mortgage period, we will see that the if the inflation rate is around, uh, sorry, the interest rate is around five percent, this five hundred thousand dollars would actually increase to around one point two million. So you can work this out using um, the present value present value annuity factors. Um, you can just go on to say the Commonwealth Bank website and just type this in saying five hundred thousand dollar loan, twenty five years, interest five percent per annum, and you can see that this would come up to a, an overall total of one point two million dollars or thereabouts. So this is a very, very large sum of money and not many people would have that much money available at the moment. But if this five percent interest would actually decrease to four percent interest, then this Overall repayment of 1.25, 1.2 million dollars, so 500,000 plus 700,000 dollars of interest would actually decrease. And this will become more affordable to consumers, and therefore they would increase their non-current purchases in houses, cars, or other large purchases. And these are typically non-current assets. So current purchases such as uh, coffee. Um, daily data food, although they won't be affected as much as um, these, the demand for non-current purchases, we can see that when people have more money, this will typically increase uh, purchases on small goods or services. So instead of paying 1.2 million dollars back in interest repayments and the principal loan, we can see that if the if the overall interest decreases to say $900,000, or the overall total repayment decreases to $900,000 over 25 years, we can see that this um, they would actually save $300,000 from the previous rate of interest, and they could use that $300,000 to actually over over the 25 years to actually uh, pay for current consumption of goods and services. So they would have less um, pressure on them to meet their financial obligations. So instead of paying say $500 back every week, they would only pay like $450 and that gives them an extra $50 to spend over the course of the week. So they can either choose to save it, save a proportion of that or to spend a proportion of that. And so if we aggregate this across the economy, we'll see that consumption expenditure would increase. And again within, with them, um, investment spending, the same logic applies to this non-current expenditure by households, is that the, because businesses will experience a decreased return on or pay repayment on interest, therefore they would have more incentive to actually uh, invest currently, and this would mean investment expenditure would increase at this prevailing lower rate of interest. And similarly, when our interest rate decreases, this means our exchange rate decreases and we can you can look at why this exchange rate decreases on our lecture on interest rates and exchange rates but we know that exchange rate decreases and that would make our exports more competitive therefore exports would increase and again imports in this case would actually decrease because it, it costs more money to import as our exchange rate Appreciates. So overall, we will see that the, the aggregate demand of the economy would increase. So what happens here if we look at the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model, where we have an aggregate supply as sort of this upward sloping curve, and an aggregate demand, again, as a downward sloping curve, this being the inflation rate and this being GDP or national income, we can see that here, there is low rates of inflation, so aggregate demand zero is during weak periods of, of um, demand, weak levels of confidence, and therefore overall a low inflation rate, but at, at the same time a very low GDP rate of Y zero and pi zero. But once this aggregate demand equation actually increases due to this decrease in interest rates, we will see a shift to the right of the aggregate demand equation from 80 0 to 81. And as a result, 
inflation will not increase by a whole lot amount because of the spare capacity available. So assuming that inflation here is at 2%, this is increased to around 2.5%. So still within this target range of 2-3% CPI per annum. However, the GDP or the national output has in fact increased from Y1, Y0 to Y1. And so that's how interest rates can help the achievement of strong and sustainable economic growth. So although we can see that inflation has increased by a little bit, low inflation has still been achieved. There is no examples or um, occurrence of high inflation around here. So Pi 2 is say around 5% and this is high inflation. But as we can see, this has not occurred in the economy. Only a slight increase in inflation but a very large increase in output. So that's how expansionary monetary policy can help achieve strong economic growth.